share the screen. Can you see the screen? Not yet. Okay. But it might take a minute for it to refresh sometimes. Um, still, still nothing. Okay, there we go. There we go. Can you see? Yes, fantastic. Okay, Thank you. Right. Um, welcome everyone today to our course review with Kevin A about texturing. So the purpose of our meetups are to learn these skills, perfect known skills, and learn from each other. So um, we have in person and we have online. Um, we'll also be recording this so you can find this video later in the Textile Lab uh, YouTube channel. Um, and I guess we should uh, the uh, We'll do this first, the, who we are, so I'll let you go first, Margarita. Hello, everyone. I'm the faculty director of the Textile Lab. I used to run the Intro to Fashion Tech class before Dave Hahn. I'll be joining them in the lab sections next semester, so I'm really happy to be teaching a couple of those sections um, next semester. I, I was the lead instigator for this because I think Clo is such an amazing program. Um, and I'm so happy to have such wonderful faculty as DJ and Chrissy also pursuing uh, to try to get as many of you working with 3D as possible. It's, it's such a game changing program for the industry and for designers. So um, I'm going to be quietly here on the chat uh, manning that. So if you have any questions, let me know. And then uh, I guess I'll hand it off to to Chrissy. Right now I'm teaching Junior Studio, I taught Tech App, um, the DFA class, Draping, um, and I definitely use Close 3D in my own work because I do my own research. So I use it for my own, both teaching it and also using it for my own research. Um, and I really enjoy what I can do um, and still, there's so much still to learn. So that's part of why we're doing this is because um, we're all still, you know, learning it, figuring it out, figuring out how far we can push the program and see what we can do with it. Um, which is really exciting. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Flatten, aka DJ. So I am an instructor here and I teach, let's see, I, I taught um, tech apps, um, oh wow, flat pattern, fashion drawing, fashion drawing two, junior studio, and I think I might be creating one, but um, just a lot of different areas. And uh, Close 3D has really opened up my design and being able to like achieve things that was never possible before. This is a really wonderful program and it can really uh, take your design to the next level. So what we'll do today, we'll do an introduction. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Flow 3D in case this is the first time you are um, watching one of our videos. Um, we're gonna talk about the importance of texture and their fabric properties. Um, so we're gonna be talking about the um, so putting print design on your, so you have the visualization of the print design, of a texture, and then how that relates to the actual fabric properties and how they fit the body and break the body in that relationship. So we'll walk through how to do that, how to choose colors, um, and how to apply those things to your designs in Flow 3D, um, and as well as graphics. And then we'll talk about some additional software um, and links that you can go to to find more um, resources and information. We'll have time for you to work on your own. Um, and then um, at the end, there's a uh, link to our Slack to stay in touch before the next uh, closed meeting. Oh, that's um, so this is a link. If you uh, joined our very first closed meeting meetup, we played this, but we're not going to play it here today. But um, this is a great little video introduction to Clove uh, 3D. So take a look at that if you haven't already. Um, and here's some links to um, here's some links to that. There's a link to the Flow website, um, and some industry information. Um, there's a link to an article that actually outlines some benefits. But uh, as we said before, it helps us visualize um, designs really quickly. And what we're going to talk about today is how you can actually get the full effect of your the color. 
color and texture um, into your design. So when you started, we pretty much just been working in just kind of that blank white slate. I mean, we haven't talked about fabric that much, so that's what we're going to focus on today. So you can put pretty much anything you can imagine into the program and see it instantly um, and how it affects your design. So um, we're going to talk. We're going to start first with like fabric selection, and before we jump right in, this is a so this is an image of Chloe Three D on the screen. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment because I want to have some fabric swatches to share. All right. Um, so can you see me? Oh, there's no display. There we go. Like uh, so for the um, fabric selection. So. If you think about clothing, it is really important that we choose the right fabric, right? So um, whether it's a knit, a woven, and then within that, you know, what kind of uh, fibers it is, what kind of structure. So we have a woven, woven, it could be just a plain woven, it could be a twill, it could be a satin. You're going to get different properties with those different fabrics. If it's a knit, you can have, um, you know, a ponte knit, a jersey knit, a spandex knit, there's different kinds of knits. Um, just the basics on that. Um, what is my, if we have a, a woven, uh, I have a couple of examples. So I have a piece of, of muslin and it's pretty stiff. It, you know, it's kind of just looks basic. It doesn't stretch all, even a whole lot in the bias. Um, definitely doesn't stretch lengthwise and width. Um, and it's just, it's a more stiff structured material. Whereas if we have a satin, which this isn't the best satin, but if we have a satin, it's going to be more drapey. It's going to flow a little bit more and it's a little bit, um, you know, it's floppy. <laughs> um, so you have that flow to the fabric a little bit more. You have, think about um, like a silk, um, a charmeuse or even like a chiffon, that's gonna drape even more. So it's really important that you have the right properties of your fabric. Um, if you have knit, knit is gonna stretch usually. Most knits are gonna stretch and they have different types of properties as well. It definitely doesn't have the same body. Um, here's a bigger one, this is kind of a chunky knit um, with some texture in it. So this one, you know, it's, oh, it's even stretchier than the other one because it's a little bit more open. So these have different properties in it. So you can imagine if you put, if you have a garment designed in Close 3D and you put each of these on there, it's going to change the fit significantly. Just look at doing it in real life. Like you think about, um, you have a t-shirt, it's snug, you pull it on over your body. If you sewed up that t-shirt in a woven material, woven doesn't stretch. So you probably couldn't even get it on yourself. So it is really important that you choose the right fabric for your design, um, especially between it and woven, and then also um, picking the right uh, type of drape and flow that you want for your garment. Anything to add to that? And pretty much Flow 3D has a bunch of preset fabrics that will be available to you. I'm pretty sure it's um, about over 100. There's a lot of fabrics already input. So Much better answer. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be showing you how to take those and put those on your garment. Talk about the, uh, we'll just wait till we uh, have some music. See how to put the fabric on there and print. We'll talk about that you can actually make fabric that's not possible. But we'll move on and we'll go through. Let me share the screen again. So this is an example of a cotton jersey shirt. Um, so we have right over here, you can see in the window um, that it actually is selected as a knit cotton jersey instead of the default fabric. So right now we're just dealing with putting the right fabric onto this. And here you can see the list. We'll open the program shortly. You can see the list of all the different kinds of fabric you can select to put on here. So um, pretty much here, you can, you're going to be able to manipulate your design and put whatever fabric you have. You know, a lot of times as designers, we typically practice fabric first, which is a really good uh, practice to get into. Um, so this program will allow you to, one, see what fabrication for your intended use is and how it's going to fit with the properties of that particular fabric. So it's pretty exciting. You good there? Yep. All right. So the next thing is that uh, you can also change your colors in Clo. 
And the great thing about Flow is they have an entire preset of every single pan tone that's available and can color match to uh, those color standards. So typically as a designer, you know, fabric first, picking out your color palettes. So you're going to be able to see your garments in your actual color palettes uh, in your actual garments. So you'll pretty much have a really great holistic view of what this garment is going to be uh, once you get to the end use of it or the, the final product itself. So we're going to be showing that today as well once we get to the um, demo portion of this. And then additionally, you can add in uh, whatever texture or print that you would like. So this is a really great um, feature of Flow because, you know, whenever you preset the fabric for the preset fabrics, for instance, like this uh, knit cotton jersey that's here, yes, it's going to have those properties, but what is the, uh, what's the finishing on it? What type of yarns are they using? You're actually able to bring in several different supported file types to get that texture into the actual file. So here we got the space dye texture, which is typically this one's the jersey. You know, it's usually two different uh, fibers, usually cotton and poly, and then it is garment dyed or it is fabric dyed, uh, and the dye only reacts to one of those two fibers, whether it be cotton or it be poly. So natural versus synthetics. So the really fantastic thing about Flow is that Flow supports a lot of different file types. So you can bring in a JPEG, you can bring in a TIFF, you can bring in a PNG, you can bring in an AI file or a PSV even. Typically for many programs, uh, most of the time when you import something in, it only reads a JPEG, a TIFF, or a PNG. Here, here with Flow, you're actually able to bring in that AI file or PSV as well. One thing to note is if you have fabric that uh, has a transparency to it, such as a, let's say a netting, for instance, or if you're choosing an eyelet fabric, if you wanted to have that transparency, you actually will have to um, use the PNG file. Margarita, is that correct? Yes, sorry, I was muted. Yes. Yep, PNG. I get PNG allows for transparency. Perfect. So yes, it's the PNG file that will allow for that transparency. So that is the only only time that you're going to have to choose this, a specific file is when um, is when you're looking for that transparency element to it, which we are going to be demoing this as well today. Also, it's you can put an all over print in here as well. And as you can see here on this example, I just scanned in a piece of fabric and it actually um, auto, auto generates that pattern across the entire garment. You don't have to do that yourself. Flow uh, makes it so it comes in this preset to do that for you automatically. It's a really nice feature. So one thing on this, um, and I'm just sharing this because it took me a moment to wrap my head around it because we're doing you know, we normally have a piece of fabric and it already has you visually see what it looks like, you know, the texture and the, or the print or whatever color it may be. Um, and it all automatically, you know, it has the properties as well. Here, we're having to do that in two different steps because we have, um, the computer has generated the fabric properties just in, into that fabric. But as far as what it looks like, we're doing, it's more of a visual texture. So it's not that it's creating, you know, an actual bumpy sort of you know, texture in the program, it's a picture of that texture and print or whatever it is. So you need the visual of what it looks like. So that's what we have to put on top of it. Um, and the thing to remember is that if you think about it, you could put, if you scan a woven fabric, you could actually take a picture of a woven fabric and put it on top of a, of a knit fabric. But that, we know in real life that doesn't work. You would not have something that looks like um, a tweed um, with jersey properties, right? That's like a t-shirt with jersey properties. So like think of like a, a coat or um, jacket, the properties of that, if it looks like that, we can put that visualization on something that reacts like a jersey, that doesn't match. So you could technically do that in flow, but so it's important to remember that they have to go together and it's, it's good to help you remember because um, fabric is so important um, in, you know, to what we do. Um, remembering that you have to have not only your fibers, um, and you have to have the fiber, the structure, 
uh, of the, the fiber and the structure have to mesh, and we need all of that information to make something that will actually work. And that's the same for when you are working in studio and you are designing, and um, your instructor maybe says, is this a knit or a woven? You need to know exactly what it is, why you designed it that way. If it's a woven, it's gonna need darks and shaping. If it's knit, it's probably not going to need that, and vice versa. So it is really, it, it's important that you know that. So remember that all those um, textile um, terms and the, the textile um, information that you learn, you can use it here in just a little bit different way, but it's very important. Um, so apply that there. So I know we have all different levels learning. So if you've already gone through that class, remember to apply it here. If you are in that class right now, make sure you're thinking about that and taking some of that information. So the next interesting part about this is that you're able to manipulate your texture or print to different scaling or even the directional change. So for instance, with texturing, um, you know, if you have a t-shirt like that space guy we just saw, you're probably not going to scale that up because it's not really realistic. Mm -hmm. So this more applies to prints more than anything. So as you can see from the examples on the screen, we actually scaled uh, this really simple uh, t-shirt uh, in, th in three different stripes. It's actually the exact same file, but what we did was we played with the gizmo in the 3D window to manipulate this into three different scales. If you think about this, say you're working with your strike offs, which is an industry, an industry standard uh, way of measuring garments and getting or measuring prints and getting them into our actual garments. Uh, in simpler terms, it is the artwork for the garment. Here in Flow, you're actually able to see your artwork on your garment before you actually send it off to uh, a vendor or before you actually sample it. So this is a really great tool because you can see the exact, you can get your exact in design intention into this uh, in a matter of moments. And there's three very different looks there. You can check those out. I want to see what this looks like in different <laughs> scales. Do I want it to look like a dress uniform or? <laughs> exactly. I mean, look and look at these three looks. They're very, very different. You know, we've got a rest uniform, we've got a contemporary strike, and then we have like something that's like the old navy on the right. So <laughs> very traditional. Exactly. Three very different looks. And the and we're gonna talk about this tool once we get to the demoing portion, but it is the edit texture 3D tool that we'll be utilizing for that, as well as the texturing gizmo that automatically pops up when we select the edit texture 3D tool. So additionally, the really great thing here is you can add graphics or you can add logos in. So, you know, graphics and logos, you can kind of think of it as a place print. It doesn't repeat at all. It just sits on its own field. And you can place this within the garment wherever you would like. It's a really easy way of scaling your graphics or your logos on a garment to where you want it to be and also placing it as well. So this is a very useful tool. I mean, here we've got the Kent State University logo. Uh, it's in a very standard positioning right now. You can see a lot of t-shirts that have graphics on, but we could turn that to its side, for instance, and run it up and down the side of the garment. Uh, we could even shrink it down and make it a little chest logo. Uh, we could put it on the back. We could put it on the sleeve cap. We could put it pretty much wherever we want. So, and whenever you add the graphic in, it actually lays into the fabric so if you start playing around with it and trying to handle it within the 3D window, it will actually manipulate that to the fall in the drape of the fabric as well. So it's really, really cool because you get to see how it's going to hang and what that would look like in that fabric. <laughs> exactly. We can mix things. So we have mixed print and graphic placement here. Um, the print and this looks like it's um, the plaid is really beautiful on a circle type, you know, kind of skirt. You get this uh, bias look also with the stripe. And I see there the stripe, you um, change the scale in two different areas. So you've got uh, the same file, but you've scaled it in, in a different area in different ways and rotated it in different ways. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, 
Uh, for anyone that was at the last atelier when we were doing that sheer dress, the three samples on the right of this slide are, are that exact same dress. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, three very different looks uh, from one single garment with three very different uh, patterns from mixing techniques. You get a nice visual. You can see, you know, you think about if you're like developing a line and you're, you know, needing to test out, or, you know, kind of decide. I, and I can see, you know, developing a line. You might even try that, um, like the middle one with the with the flowers. You may try that in a really small print, scale print. You might try it this size and then try it really oversized, so you can see what the three versions would look like. Um, and how that would fit in with your line um, or your collection. Um, and then this one here, um, I just put an example of, these are my um, swatches. I had developed these actually not even, I developed these long ago. Um, and so I had, you know, they were perfect squares, they're repeatable. And so I just, just you know, made a dress and put them in Flow 3D. Um, it, you know, I've had them for a while. <laughs> so uh, before I even knew, how, knew what Flow 3D was. So, you know, any kind of pattern that you've developed, you can just you know, easily put it in. Um, you can play with the scale. I didn't play with the scale too much here, but I do have, you know, mixing prints um, and trying things here. Um, if I was going to cut and sew this together, I probably would have never thought to try putting these prints together, but they're kind of fun. So you can you can play and see see what you what you might like. Exactly. There's a lot of <clears throat> pardon me. There's a lot of experimentation they are able to do here in Flow that, uh, you know, with traditional pattern making and construction would take uh, hours upon days of time just to see if something looks right together. And here you can get that exact sampling right off the bat. You know, a lot of times in the industry we use padding to show representation of our garments in which are typically, you know, your 2D flats that are filled mm -hmm. to create that pad with the texture, with the print, whatever it might be. But though it's a wonderful representation, it does not give you such accuracy as what Flow 3D does. And you're really able to see precisely how that's going to look. So let's move to the demo. I'll let you take over with that. All right. We're going to go ahead and move over to the demo now. Any questions so far? None in the chat so far. Any in person? All right, we're going to start out with a new file so I can show you exactly how we're going to move forward with this. Do we have to save? All right. So we've got Thomas here. Um, we're going to close him first. So uh, for the for this demo, and so everyone's able to follow along. Um, we're actually just going to use one of the preloaded garments that Flow has available to them, to us. So if you go up to garment in the library on the left hand side, um, and if you need to get to your library, you don't have this window open. If you close it, you'll see over here we have library, history, and modular configuration. When we click on library, and it automatically brings up your garment, your avatar, your hanger, fabric, hardware, material, and stage. We'll be talking about that stage next semester. You know, everyone's really excited to get to that part. So uh, go ahead and click on the garment. And you will see that it says female t-shirt and then male t-shirt. I'm going to go ahead and use the male t-shirt for this, for this demo. And it asks me, would you like to load the avatar pose and size file? I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And you'll see that it loads it automatically and it has the sewing that's been applied and all of the properties are there. So I'm going to simulate now by hitting the space bar. And it fits beautifully. Now, I don't know about, about you, but the little purple lines drive me a little bit nuts. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. In order to get rid of those purple lines, uh, what you do is you go to your 2D pattern window and you select trade. So that's like the two little tiny pockets um, icon. And I'm going to just select those lines by left clicking and then hitting the delete or backspace to remove them. And it's just got a nice clean look before we start applying all of our 
So here's a new thing I, I just learned today. So you can right click and delete all baselines and remove them all at once. Thank you so much. I don't know yes. which ones it works with. Sometimes it doesn't. Yes. I need other tool. Yes. That is fantastic. Thank you. All right. See, you can be doing this for, for quite a while and still be learning new things every single yes. day. This program just it makes things easier and easier. Lots of fun little things to learn. So now we've got this all set. Uh, let's first start off by adding some fabric in. So when you think of a t-shirt, we know right off the bat that this is going to be a knit, right? Uh, t-shirts, you know, they don't have zippers. Uh, and so in order to get into this garment and get our head through that and get that and get Tom's noggin in there, we have to make sure that there's a lot of stretch uh, to that to this fabrication. So I'm going to go over to my library. And I'm going to click on fabric in the left click. You'll see that an entire list of fabrics come up here. And you have a, a beautiful arrange or a beautiful array of different fabrics. It's quite a large myriad of them. And you can go through and check every single one of these. We've got muslin in here, we've got, we've got fleeces, we've got rabbit fur, mm -hmm. we've got denim, we've got poplin, we've got yeah. muskrat belly. So whenever you want to design with some muskrat belly, that's even here. Strange. Um, yeah. You've got your stretch sateen, you've got your velvets, and it actually will show you what that fabric looks like when you cover over top of it. Now these are all really fun fabrications. We're just going to go ahead and choose a cotton jersey. So we're going to come down, and here we have the knit cotton jersey. I'm going to double click on this fabric, and a window is going to pop up that says the file has been added to the object browser. So I'm going to select OK, and then I'm going to go to my right hand side and select my object browser. And now you see there's the default fabric and the knit cotton jersey as well. So we want to get this into the garments. So I'm going to start by dropping some of this in. So what you have to do is you left click on the, on the square icon of the knit cotton jersey. And I am actually dragging it over and onto the 2D window pattern piece. So now that's in there. And how I know it's in there is when I zoom, you can actually see the, uh, the knit stitch of that jersey. Can everyone see that? It's a little hazy on the projector over here, but it's absolutely there. So we want to go ahead and drop this in all of our pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and start dropping those in by just dragging it over. And what, even if you have a uh, symmetric sewing or symmetric editing on, you still have to drop it into every single piece. It does not recognize it when you're dropping fabric in. So something to keep in mind. So it looks like we got all of our fabrications in, which is pretty exciting. So um, now that we're at this point, we know that this is a knit, a knit cotton jersey. That is pretty much how you select your fabric. You know, if you were testing fabrications out, you could, let's say if you're interested in the rayon jersey, you could even double click on that and be able to test these fabrics out by dropping those in and then comparing the two. For this demo, I'm going to stick with the, the knit cotton jersey for today. But I just want to make sure that everyone knows that these are available to them. Any questions so far? on the um, fabric there, um, you can see that it highlights all the pieces that it actually is. I see more wide here, so I can click that, there's nothing. So that's kind of help, helpful to make sure that you've not missed anything. So if we have this here, then that can highlight, you know, now when we click here, that there's nothing, so I need to fix that. 
something I like to do to make sure that I have everything in the right place. Absolutely, that's a good, that's actually a fantastic point. Um, the, let's, so let's talk about color now. So, you know, for all, for those who've been working in Chrome for a while or any business new to you, um, you know, working on that white, on that white fabric, it gets a little bit boring sometimes, right? <laughs> Just staring at that constantly. So I'm gonna show you how to change colors today. So it's really important that you actually have the knit cotton jersey selected or whatever your fabric choice is in the object browser. I'm now going to open up my property editor by clicking on that. When the property editor is open, it, it shows you the property uh, editor for whatever objects you have selected. So if I go to default fabric, you see that it opens up for there. If I have for the knit cotton jersey, it opens up for that fabric. If I click on, on a pattern piece, if I click on a pattern piece, it shows the property uh, editor for that pattern piece. So the important part is that you don't select the pattern piece, but the fabric itself when you want to change color. So make sure you have that selected. And all of this information comes up. All we're interested in today is going to be the color portion right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that little tiny square. And this entire menu comes up with all the colors that are available to us. So I always like to work in Pantone because that is color standards that are set within the industry. And that is number two. There also is uh, polyester Pantone. And then there is also the nylon brights. Since this is a, a polyester, or a, a nylon-based fabric in cotton, we are going to actually stick with the uh, cotton TCS. So this is every single color standard that exists within the Pantone library. Let me go ahead and scroll down here and show you what that means. Every single uh, standard you can possibly imagine is right at your fingertips at all times. This is such a great resource. You know, the Pantone book, if you have physical copies of these, cost thousands upon thousands of thousands of dollars for little tiny squares of fabric. You have it right here at your fingertips. So the other thing is once you hover over a color, it will actually come up and say the Pantone will give you the code and then the color name itself. So um, any, any recommendations on colors that you'd like to use for this? No? Okay, I'll go ahead and select one. So we're going to go ahead and preset it to a, a gray tone, how about? So let's see if I can find one of my favorite groups. Gunmetal, love a good gunmetal color. Charcoal gray, let's use steel gray. I should use that in the industry quite a bit. So let's go ahead and select that one. The moment you select that fabric, or you select that color, it automatically populates into the 2D and 3D windows um, for the avatar and for your patterns. And you can kind of go through and select them, whatever you'd like. Now we have the uh, autumn blonde selected. <laughs> for those who haven't worked with Pantone before, they have a bunch of really silly names, so they're kind of fun to play around with. Let's go ahead and select that. We're gonna go with Alice. So alloy is a nice light warm gray tone. And as you can say, see, like I mentioned, everything is now applied across the fabric. So that is that is the fundamentals on how you select fabric and how you select color within the garment itself. So now we're going to move on to uh, textures and prints. So we've got our fabric, we've got our color, but now we want to apply some prints to it. So how you do that is you just come over to the um, object browser and the knit cotton jersey, and that second little icon to the right will say add print. You go ahead and collect or select that. Now, for those that don't have any um, any type of files that have prints or textures, you go to the attendee files uh, for the atelier. We have preloaded a a bunch of different textures and prints and graphics for you to play around with. So I put mine on the desktop. Oh, click the arrow down the, the, this PC, you can say that. 
Oh, thank you. It just came to my mind. Thank you. I'm an Apple person, so this is <laughs> this is like um, entirely foreign to me. So as you can see in the file, I've uploaded. Uh, these are all the files that are uploading the attended files. You've got a blue gray texture, a white and black stripe AI, a white and black stripe JPEG. You've got the floral print JPEG. You've got the KSD logo graphic AI. You've got a plaid that was actually scanned. So this is a fabric that I was physically holding in my hand and scanned it in to see how it looked. And then I got the space side texture. We got some wovens as well. So right now we're going to just stick with the knit fabrication, of course. So we're going to be using the space side texture scan. And this was an actual fabric that was scanned in. So once I've selected that space side texture, I hit open. And it automatically populates. Now, if your screen is not showing um, your fabrics, you actually have to go into the um, this little icon right here and show the textured fabric. Okay, hold on. For some reason, it's not popping up for us. Try and upload it one more time. That should be showing. That should surface. Well, okay. That's oh, sorry, everyone should have tested this out on this computer before beforehand. Okay, so this file is having some type of issue. We're going to open up one more. It's already open. Right, go ahead. I'm just going to open up one more file, everyone. Just hold tight. Thank you. 
Just going to troubleshoot for a moment here, everyone. Just hang tight. Even if you copy it, I mean, like, it considers like, yeah. This is interesting. I have not put a second time to explain how I'm making these books for myself and um, the avatar size, you know, and the person size, which we'll talk about in the next uh, meetup. But um, I certainly did not imagine this with a flat on it. Um, but now I get the visual of a flat on this dress. So, um, so you can see how that flows around. Like that. Let's try that with that one. There we go. Let's give that a try. So the print is not allowing, for some reason, it's not working here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on that fabrication. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down into the property editor. And where the little texture uh, block is, we're going to double click that. And now that we've got this pull, this little screen pulled up here, we're going to locate our file. I'm going to go ahead and grab that space by texture. It could be a Mac PC thing that it doesn't age like the same, but it, I don't know. it very well could be. Now we've got, and now we've got that beautiful oh, yeah. space by texture inside there, which is pretty exciting. Now. We can actually go in and change the color as well of that space dye. So say for instance you wanted to see that space dye fabric in multiple different tones, especially if you got a texture that was um, a white and black space or if it was like white and gray or something like that, you can really see what over dyeing this fabric would look like due to the garment dyeing afterwards. So now we have, let's do, let's do a Kent State blue tone. How about that? If you're, if you're doing like a tonal that like it's a tonal color, you could really just make your print be a gradient from light like to dark and just do the colors in flow and you could get all different colors you want. Exactly. You can really mm -hmm. test out different colorways this way as well. So that is so that is one way, uh, that is one way how you can add bring the fabric in, go to your object browser again, select that fabric, and then change the texture. And you're able to manipulate the color as well. Any questions so far? Yes, Esther. So I don't know if it's whether my clover is going to be too old or what's going on, but do you know if this is still compatible with like five two? Is it still com compatible five two? Yeah. Um, what sort of why? I think I missed it. I, I, I haven't it. downloaded the latest one, and it still works the same. I don't know if that was mine. Because yeah. I don't have the little button next to fabric. I have it under texture. Like that's how I imported the space by texture. Got it. Okay, let's we're gonna let's sidebar that one and, just, and we'll come and check that out. Okay, because, yeah, no worries. Because like yeah, the 5.0 might be might have a few differences because they did update it quite a bit between 5.0 to 6.0. Yeah. But you don't have these buttons here. I don't. I have a delete button on this one. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, then we're going to figure that out for the product I have. No well, that's good we have trouble, so we actually found a different way to do it. I feel like sometimes in Quilter, there are, just like with Illustrator and Photoshop, sometimes there's like two or three different ways to do the same thing. Exactly. And which is kind of helpful because then it, you can develop your own workflow. Because mm -hmm. even just us doing this together, I realize you do things a little differently than I do sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And it's helpful to see how someone else works and you're like, oh, maybe I like that flow better. Mm -hmm. So. Precisely. Yeah. And so you can sell for sell that there and it's like drop that fabric in. We want you to copy it. Typically with, with my with how I work, I usually bring it through the object browser. But for some reason that is not working on this, <laughs> on this machine today. So it's good to see like all these different ways you can bring it. So now we've kind of played around with texture. Let's also play around with with um, 
French roast cook as well. So I'm going to change that texture. And we're going to drop in a I'm drop in a stripe on that. That works. That's what we do on the speed direction. So since I brought that texture in, that color is still being applied to it since it's also applied there. So you know you can change your colors to whatever you'd like. You know, let's go with this fun green tone. That's kind of kind of fun little color you need. Um, and what you're able to do is then you're able to hit the edit texture button. Whenever you hit the edit texture button, this little gizmo will pop up in the right hand corner. Now the middle, this middle segment right here will actually scale it up and down. The this line right here will scale it vertically. And then if you do this line here, it scales it horizontally. So we don't want to uh, get this out of, out of proportion or, or distort it. So I'm just going to use the middle scaling one. So you got to select the, the garment first, and you'll see that it's selected with the yellow highlight that goes around it. And since we're inside of this fabric with the knit cotton jersey, it's only going to manipulate that selection. So if you had multiple fabrics or multiple prints, it's only going to manipulate the one that you've selected there. So now you can see it will actually start to scale that up. And we can get it to a size where it's wildly exploded. Maybe this starts to lose the design intention a bit. But even if we wanted to do an exploded stripe, this could be a good placement for it. Or say we wanted to go uh, backwards with it and we wanted to make it really fine. Put our eye. Exactly. This one looks like a little bit of a headache. Um, with, with, with what it creates, it's almost like an optical illusion. Let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit higher. We're going to end up right about here. So I'm pretty happy with that placement, but let's say, for instance, we're not liking the vertical stroke and we want to change it to a horizontal. Of course, when it comes to your fabrication, you know, you have to make sure you're paying attention to the, um, to, uh, the brain. the brain and then also the bias and everything else. So uh, that might be the only thing that might change that. But if you were printing your fabric, let's say it's a textile lab, you could actually see what direction it's printing prior to actually doing it. And this is based on your design intention. So anyways, to change the direction, you see this little tiny part of the gizmo that creates a circle around it when you select that line. When you start actually twisting it, it changes it, its um, orientation. So, and you can see because the grain line is different on the sleeve, it actually is manipulating the grain line according to uh, how it's falling on that main piece in the front. So now you can see the stripes are falling nicely. And we've got a really fun little horizontal, like rugby style um, t-shirt. I feel like this was like Old Navy, it's been Old Navy for the past like 15, 20 years, but you can buy one of these Probably in the best color band. <laughs> so pretty fun. So that is how you would change the direction or scale your patterns up. So let's go ahead and move on to placing graphics and logos. There's a couple different ways to do this. The graphic button, which is two over on the 3D window, uh, if you select that, you actually will be able pull up a menu. Now the menu comes up and you're able to grab your logo file. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the KSV logo graphic. And we're going to go ahead and place it. So now I've got this little tiny crosshair that comes up and it's showing me where it's going to go in the measurements on each side of it. I'm going to drop it right in the middle. And now I have the width and the height. Now this, this particular AI file was pretty huge considering it's 33 inches wide by almost 10 inches tall. So if we place it in as it is right now, it's going to overextend half the garment. And personally, I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and, and scale it down. I'm holding the shift and just hitting down. You can actually put your own measurements if you'd like. I'm going to hit OK. So 
Now, I chose that, that green color, so it's looking a little bit hard to see. So we're going to change it over to a, a pink. How about that? So now that that's selected, I'm going to go ahead and grab that graphic. And I'm going to start moving it around. You can move it around on the 2D or 3D window. You just have to make sure that you have the um, Edit Texture 3D tool selected when you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and place it here. But if you wanted to change it, um, change it whatever way you'd like, you have that little gizmo that comes up around the graphic itself, and I'm able to twist it. So let's say I wanted to run it vertically, bring it over to the side scene, and let's say I wanted to scale it up. That's going to stretch it and distort it. Let's not do that. There we go. If you hold the shift key and hit left, it will actually scale it upward. Now I'm going to place this so that we're not getting a K of 10 cut out of it. So now we've got a really great little head state detail off to the, the wearer's right hand side. So that's pretty, that's pretty exciting. You can see all your different graphics and how they're going to be placed on your garment and manipulate that graphic to where you want it to be and scaling it. Um, so pretty exciting stuff there. That's, you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, or, yeah. So, yeah, I think we maybe come up with that one. Let's start um, on this one, since this is a more of a, this isn't this, uh, we we're working with knit here. Let's put a couple different things. So we have this, which, um, this particular look, so this is a woven dress. Um, so this is really great to see how a pattern will fall, especially since I have this sort of circle shape here. Um, but we could try, let's try a couple of different textures. So let's change this to, so we actually um, took a photo of this earlier today. Let's try this one. This is actually a photo. So this is definitely not quite the right scale um, on this particular thing. And we do have some edges here. So let's scale this down. Let's just go up three. So this, I think what I'd probably do is, um, if you had, um, you've never tried to make a print from a photo on photo, uh, you can put this in Photoshop and modify it a bit so you don't have these sharp edges here. But we get the sense of what this would look like in this um, uh, sort of textured woven fabric. Now this garment here, if you see the neckline here, I actually I taped the seam. Um, I, did, I wasn't quite finished with this, and this is kind of stretching. I haven't put facings or anything on it yet, so I just put applied casing. So that's why we have this sort of orange sort of color here to keep it from stretching out. So this isn't quite complete just yet, um, but I had it, and it was a good woven example. Um, let's try changing the color. I like this a lot because we have the effect of that um, sort of tethered look here. That one. Yeah. Um, you, know, you can add this as well. Again, you know, even if you were using a plaid or whatever it might be, or say you were doing a floral, a floral might be. So let's try the floral, yeah. I will show you the scale. Um, so I can make so this definitely with um, when you're working with uh, 
Um, when you're working with the, any kind of floral or stuff like this, it is really important that you consider scale. If you think about what that looks like versus what this, a really large um, oversized print, you get a very different appearance here. Um, this is maybe a little more, um, I don't know, maybe a little more chic. This is a little bit, um, I don't know, sweet, I guess. So uh, you definitely, with florals, it's, it's really important that you consider the scale um, and what's appropriate for your customer. And this is a great way to see very quickly um, what is going to look appropriate for, for your target market and what they're going for. Um, this is really great. Um, I like, you know, and with this, we have very different ones. If we think about the plaid, we're very aware of the green because it's, you know, striped plaid. We see how the green folds around the body, whereas this, we don't see that so much. So this is more highlight um, and kind of these circle shapes as much as uh, stripe or flat would. Um, the socks and how to change the, the bow and stuff. Um, there's one more thing, and this is a little bit. Um, so I'm going to share one other thing. Um, this is getting a little bit technical, and I'm still, I will admit, I'm still learning this a little bit too, um, but I'm working on um, a bra, uh, which is a little bit more of a technical type of garment, um, and what I've had to do is there was not, I needed power mesh, and there was no power mesh option available in Quo. Um, you can go, and there's a, which we're going to talk about this a little bit later, um, there's a website called Closa, um, and there's cotton works. There's some places where you can uh, download digital fi fabric uh, files and use those, but I didn't find anything that I was really happy with, um, and I needed very specific types of material, and I'm playing with like the stretch ratio of different materials. So what I've done here is this doesn't look, this looks kind of crazy right now, but I actually engineered my own fabrics. Um, so for this one here, um, I think I actually just, I created, I did add, I just edited a fabric, I did add and edited a fabric. But you can see down here, I actually uploaded a photo of um, my power mesh here. Um, I did put it in, in a Photoshop to make sure it was like repeatable so it didn't have those like lines. Um, so I put that in there. And then what I went down to is I went down to the uh, properties. Um, in the detail here. So then I can play with all the stretch um, in the, like the details of the fabric. So I'm hopefully creating my own fabric properties. So this is definitely, a, I'm not an expert at this. I'm still learning this, but um, you know, if you don't actually have something that you want, uh, I've done some reading on, you know, trying to like, okay, what is the, what is the stretch like? What is the stretch for? What are these means? What are some um, good, um, you know, how does this affect the fabric properties and what should I set it at and knowing my own fabric properties. So I did that because I did not have it. I couldn't find anything. Same with this one here. This is a woven fabric. It's called Duoplex. It's basically should not stretch at all. Um, I know with, even with muslin, you have just a little bit of stretch in the, um, in the width, but this one really, like it has very, very little stretch. And that's really important when you're trying to create structure. Um, that the bias doesn't even stretch that much. So I created my own here um, to get closer to the property. I also went in and you can, um, when you're sewing, I applied some elastic to these edges here um, within this property editor. So just a lot here, once you get a feel for, you know, first applying the fabric and then you can start with kind of playing with them here a little bit more experimenting with, um, with some of those properties um, once you get comfortable with like putting those in there and seeing how they react. So, um, so I thought I'd just share that, like kind of give you a glimpse of like you, what you can do beyond just this. I definitely learned this if you haven't, how to get those fabrics in there, how they work, um, and um, and then move on to that. But just so you know, there's, there's that option to get a little more customized, especially if you can't find what you need. And then one more thing I was thinking, so this one here, so this is a woven garment, um, and it's made to be woven, but it's not, I and mean, it's got some gathers at the bust here. Um, 
what if we actually made this a knit? Let's just see the difference in how it drapes, or just put a different fabric on it. So this is just a, a cotton chambray. So let's put, actually let's do like silk on this. Let's see what that looks like. Just to, and this is more of just a fabric property and we can, um, I guess, put this to the side. Let all of these and drag this. And then, we get a different flow here, right? It has a little different look than the other one. So I like to, sometimes it's nice to just see um, how things flow with different materials. Um, I can do a chiffon. So now we have it sheer, right? So we have um, a completely different so that'd be kind of cool to try later. Um, put something in there. So um, it's really fun to definitely play with different things to see. You can even see it sheer over here. Um, and you know, see what you can come up with. And it's really nice to just try different things with a with a design and see what it looks like. Um, and then you have to sew it up and cut it out. Really fun. Alright. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question about the NFA. Do you know if you could select one of your other fabrics, pick the sheer one, and then drag the onto a layer with two graphic on it, like it would swap it out with that? It would swap it out to your. So in your. Uh, the this property one? item there? You know, I've never done the dress, but you yeah. know, you added all those other fabrics to test. If you took the sheer one, or the other one, just remove the drag on top of the cotton. Okay, I was wondering, because I mean, I've had. I could drop it from there and switch it. You know if you could try that out with the graphic too? Oh, the gra to get the graphic there? No, just like leave the graphic there and grab a fabric. Oh, from and just put the it right library. on top of it? Then you grab from the library though. Yeah, like, like right here. Okay, I didn't know if I could go the graphic. I guess we just have to load the graphic mm -hmm. again. Let's see what this does. Let's put. Um, We put the silk, silk on with the, and now we have a sheer to show the different Yeah, some of those, and that's one thing like I just tried because I was thinking, okay, what if we select all of the pattern pieces so we don't have to drag each one? If we select all of the pieces, we can just drag um, drag this to it and it will populate on all of them so we don't do it one at a time. So there's different things like that you can try. Um, I think is it this one? Oh, sorry. I kept forgetting that piece when I was trying to do one. Um, but you know, try things because sometimes oh, there's a lot of shortcuts. So now we have two fabrics in one. So as you can see, we have to play around with the different fabrics Ooh, together. Now we have a chiffon in the back. Oh, lovely. Oh. Um, well, uh, so yeah, so play with it. Um, and there's a lot of things, you know, I think the other thing too is that if you think about like what I'm interested in designing and um, Daniel's interested in designing, it might be slightly different than you. So it, that's the thing too, so more people are using it for different sort of um, aesthetic or design purposes, then you want, you know, there's more things to learn because there's maybe things that you know, I just don't do because it's not part of my design aesthetic that you might come across, right? Because it's like, oh, I can put this here and connect the dots here, and I just haven't gotten to it because it's not, you know, what I've been working on. So um, it's kind of cool that way. You can you can use these in so many different ways. Gotcha. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the presentation here. It's hard to go back and forth between PowerPoints and um, and emails that we're sharing. So. We might disappear for a moment, so apologies. It says I have to refresh. Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop the recording so that that can start processing. Uh, okay.